So what we're going to discuss now is the uh, test system option to the uh, 28000 system, which is a uh, subsystem option that allows you to do an on-site calibration of the hardware, uh, meaning that you can run a full calibration of the signal conditioning cards right in your test cell, right at your facility, so you won't need to send any of your hardware back to Precision Filters to do a calibration. So the test system consists of the uh, 28,000 BIF control card, which provides, in addition to providing the Ethernet uh, interface to the PC, there are also test circuits on the BIF card that work in conjunction with the test bus function, which we use to inject signals, and the monitor function, which allows us to break off any single output of any channel and monitor it with our with our uh, with our BIF control card so we can view the output of any channel um, in the system teed off essentially from the output that goes to the digitizer so we can look at data from channels in real time without affecting the output going to our digitizer so in addition to the BIF card we use two external test instruments to uh, run the fat calibration task. We use a Agilent uh, function generator, which we use to generate signals that we inject into our test bus. And we use an Agilent DMM that we use to uh, monitor the output signals from our, from, our, uh, from our test. So we inject signals with a function generator run them through the amplifiers, we use the monitor to look at the amplifier outputs, and then the monitor is measured with the DMM. And so using this test methodology, we, we do a V in and V out measurement, and using a ratio metric uh, measurement, we are able to determine things like amplifier gain, filter response, uh, we can measure the excitation supply levels, and all the other functions of the card. So when we run our factory acceptance test, or as we call it FAP, we verify every single function of the card, excitation, filters, amplifiers, etc. So these are the components of the test system. The actual FAT calibration test, I can show you, runs uh, out of our GUI program. So as I discussed previously, our GUI program uh, comes with the system. It's a uh, graphical user interface that provides you access to all the functions of the card so you can program the, uh, you know, all the hardware settings. And running out of this GUI program, we can also execute the factory acceptance test. So I'll talk a little bit about that inside of our software we configure a we configure a interface a remote interface to the DMM to the function generator and we're controlling the chassis and using these remote uh, Ethernet connections uh, we run a factory acceptance test So in this panel we see we have, uh, this is the FAT control panel. For, so from this panel we can select different features or functions we would like to test. So example, we can test the filter, amplifier gain, input AC coupling, excitation, uh, noise performance, etc. So we can select one or all of these tests to run on the signal conditioning cards. And here we see a listing of the channels in our chassis. So we can select one or all of the channels in the chassis to run a FAT test on. So when we kick off the FAT, what happens is the software takes control of the remote test instruments, the function generator and the uh, DMM, and it takes control of the chassis. And the software then orchestrates a test where we inject signals, measure the injected signals, measure the amplifier outputs, 
and calculate, uh, you know, whether we are whether the hardware is functioning and whether we are compliant with our specifications. So what I will do here is I'm going to demonstrate a test where we're going to test the uh, filter function of a, of a channel in our system. So what we will do is in our uh, test system, fat panel, we will select the filter test. We will select a panel or a channel for test and we're going to run the calibration test. There will be a couple of prompts that for now I will just tell you to ignore. Okay, so here we go. So we can see we're setting up to start the filter test. We see that we outline the parameters for the test. So in this test we're setting the filter cutoff to 30 Hertz. We tell you the filter uh, type that we're testing and we tell you how to uh, how we're calculating gain. So in this test we're putting in DC. We measure the offset. We measure the amplifier response without the filter in and with the filter in and then we calculate an amplifier gain. So now we can see we went from DC, now we're injecting 25.62 Hertz with a 30 Hertz cutoff. We expect the filter to be attenuated by 0.1 dB and we measured that it was. Now we're injecting 28.32 Hertz. We expect the filter to be 1 dB down at that point and we measured 0.971. And then we inject 30 Hertz, which is a filter cutoff. We measured minus 2.901 dB and we expect it to be 3 dB down, and that's with a 2.2 dB tolerance. So for each of these tests, we tell you a VN, a VL, an expected uh, response, and the error, and then we give you a pass-fail status. So using this test, we can do a full calibration on the entire card. So this fat test methodology, as I said, allows you to do a full calibration of the system in place. Sort of an offshoot test of the what we call the fat calibration test is what we call a go-no-go -no -go test. And a go-no-go -no -go test is very similar to the fat test, but the go-no-go, -no -go, instead of exercising all of the functions on the card by changing all of the settings, only test what the current settings are. So a go no go test would be very valuable if you are getting ready to run tests to make your measurements. So you would configure the system. So you would configure the excitation, the amplifier gain, the filters to the appropriate settings for your measurement. Then, right before you actually make the measurement, you can run a go no go test, which looks very similar to the fat that I just showed you. And what the go-no-go -no -go test would do is look at the current settings and then use the test system to go out and measure them to verify that the hardware is actually set to those settings and that the hardware is actually functioning properly. So before you ran a test, it would be a very quick automated uh, checkout to verify that the hardware is programmed properly and functioning uh, as intended. So this test not only serves to tell you that everything is working for your measurement, it also documents what your settings were for a particular test run. So using the test subsystem option is very powerful from a calibration standpoint and for a pre, for, from a pre-test uh, verification uh, test point. Thank you, Kyle. So that uh, wraps up our video. Um, should you have any questions about any aspect of the presentation uh, or any of the tests we did or any aspect of the equipment, please uh, feel free to contact us. Thank you for listening.